Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So in today's video, I actually want to show you uh, some of the updates that they added to the Procreate app. Uh, pretty impressive actually because I really didn't think this uh, particular update would ever kind of get here um, or this particular set of commands. So basically, uh, they now have Liquify, uh, Warp as well, and I'm going to show you both these, but uh, Liquify is just a major game changer for almost any software to have because up until now the only one that I'm aware of is Photoshop to have this. In fact, so much so that where I actually will carry certain projects over to Photoshop just to use Liquify because it's so powerful. Uh, and sometimes it lends me to want to digitally paint in Photoshop even though I prefer things like Clip Studio Paint and even Procreate in some ways. Uh, and now that it has Liquify, it's going to be very impactful. So let me show you how this works. Um, for instance, I, you know, I was trying to come up with something where I could implement it. Uh, for instance, with the webs here, say I duplicate this layer, and the webs look a little bit too, I actually just drew these in with an ink pen, and they look a little bit too even, a little bit too plain Jane. I was going to throw a blur on it, and I might still, but I just want to show you an instance where Liquify can actually be somewhat beneficial. So make a copy of your layer just to make sure that you uh, get the desired effect. And let's see, you're going to go to... Uh, where is it at? I'm still new to this. Right there, Liquify under Adjustments. And let's see. Uh, oh, i got to make sure that we're actually on a visible layer. Or it's not locked. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that even works the same way in uh, Photoshop. So to unlock, you do a two-finger swipe. Remember that the grid pattern tells you if it's locked or unlocked. So let's go back to this now. Liquify. And you can uh, adjust your brush size here. Okay, so we want a nice big brush for what we're going to do here. And then just grab this area and notice that you can just kind of distort these around and get a little bit of waviness. Now, if you didn't take the time to draw behind it, then you got to be aware of that. But notice how you can, you know, really adjust these webs and start to get a little bit more uh, of a natural feel instead of something so entirely, you know, strict in the way that I uh, kind of laid it out. Uh, but just keep in mind, if you're going to do stuff like this to really draw behind your artwork, it's a good practice uh, or a good thing to get into practice of doing anyways. Uh, it improves your artwork and it's uh, beneficial for things like this. So notice that I can just easily move that stuff around. I can decrease the brush size and then just get more specific with a smaller area of influence. So maybe if I want to just move you know, little bits and pieces, I can use undo and redos uh, just like normal. Uh, you've also got some of the other things like reconstruct if uh, you know if a certain area is bad you can probably just brush over that and it'll reconstruct that to the let's make a pretty distinct distortion yeah it'll reconstruct that back into place you've got twirl so you could spin some of these webs a little bit well or a lot of bit so you got to be kind of quick with that um, and then you know you could probably adjust your pressure back right and then do that and yeah it's a it's a more subtle kind of pull to it. Uh, twist the other way. Things like that. Uh, pinch. Just kind of, kind of squeeze it in. That's really great if you want to give your character these tiny little creepy eyes. Uh, expand if you want to give them the big creepy eyes or whatever. You know, so lots of room for sort of edit there. Adjust. Let's see. Not sure what this one is. Oh, still on expand. Also adjusts as the overall strength. So you got pressure and strength of the effect. So I imagine this uh, this affects everything. So let's bump this back and see if that you know changes the uh, the effect of it. Probably from the center out. That's usually how a lot of these work. So you probably have the pressure of the brush, the sensitivity in which you bear down, and then the adjust is probably from center out. I can't totally uh, vouch for that, but then. And reset will actually reset you right to the beginning before you get started. But keep in mind, you can just go back with uh, undos and redos. And then I think that's all the modifications we made. And then by saving an extra layer, you can toggle these back and forth and see if you uh, made some good adjustments there. So let me scale her up off to the side. So yeah, it gives it a little bit more of a, a random kind of vibe. Now the other thing that you can do here um, is you can adjust, you know, maybe the character as well. So, you know, Liquify can be used on all sorts of things. Uh, if you want to adjust part of the body, 
Uh, what you're going to have to do though for that is make a copy. You can actually do, uh, let's just do this for the sake of uh, showing the exercise. Uh, you can do a three finger swipe and copy all and paste. And what this will do is it'll grab everything on the canvas and I probably, yeah, I've got a maximum set of layers because I've been going kind of layer crazy here. Uh, so let me get rid of probably this one. That's the original uh, line work to that. So yeah, so again, three finger swipe down or across, I think, but down is the way I do it. Copy all and paste. Did I do it? Nope. Come on, let's try it again. Copy all and paste. Copied selection. There it goes. Okay. I was going too fast for it. So what it does, it gave me a total flattened copy of that. I'll bring that all the way to the top. Just like that. Let it go. And then now I can test this liquify. And, you know, just make adjustments. Like one of the things I do is I'll scale the artwork back. And her legs look a little bit big, head a little bit smaller. I mean, proportions are always a, a weird thing in comics and, you know, for me in general. But uh, let's try to adjust that. So liquify. Uh, we're going to use the push method, and let's start by uh, bringing in the you know, the hips or the thighs a little bit. I think that's one of the areas that sticks out. So it's tricky here because you got to get it you know just right to where you don't start creating bad lines in the work. Sometimes you're going to want to do things like isolate a portion. So maybe select the arm, invert the selection, and just isolate her hips because if not, you're going to pull in the hand with it. So you just got to be aware of that. Sometimes it's not going to matter. Again, it is comic art, so you can kind of get away with some things, but just be careful to not create some unwanted distortions as you do this. And again, isolating parts of the artwork. Uh, like for instance, the ideal way to do this would be to merge her together without the background, grab you know sections, and you can even copy that section, modify it, do a soft erase. If you say you have to crop across the waist, just do a, a copy, a soft erase, modify it, and it'll generally blend right back into the artwork. That's how digital painting works, and I've found that I can even do it in my comic art. So if I take that right there, and remember this is a merged layer on the front, so if I toggle that off, I can see the difference. So Liquify has a lot of really great effects for modifying your artwork and adjusting it. Okay, so now let me show you the warp feature. Uh, I think it's called warp in here, but with that, I think you're going to want to make a selection first, so let me find that. Okay, so warp right there. So let's see if this works off selecting um, a portion of it. I'll probably have to get rid of another layer or two here. Let's get rid of this one. That's pretty easy to fill back in. This was some of the old line work. Probably get rid of that too. Okay, so you see I made multiple attempts at the webs. Uh, if you can see that small thumbnail. But anyways, let's go back to the top layer. Let's select something. Let's try to modify. Let me show you, like, if you're trying to modify her hip here without her hand, uh, let's see if we can make the warp feature kind of uh, work within that area that we need. So I'll generate a selection. Obviously, if you want to be more careful with this, you can be. I'm just going to try to illustrate it by grabbing this whole hip and leg area. Uh, so now if I swipe and copy and paste, or yeah, copy and paste, I don't want to cut it. Um, or maybe I do actually. Uh, well, I'll start here. Let's do it this way. So I've got a floating layer over top, and then I want to warp this into place. Okay. So as I do this, as I maneuver this, it's going to expose the other area. So this is where you probably do want to cut it into place. But notice that the, you've got these handles here. You can extend this out, you know, baby got back, right? Or you can, you know, give her some thinner legs like that. And then you'd have to do some touch up. So I guess in this case, you would want to cut it. Now, I actually merged her with the background. So keep in mind, that's where you want to think ahead with the artwork. I really want, wanted to develop her where she's by herself. And then this works more effectively. I would actually cut it. And let me show you the way that that works. Um, See if I can figure out how to do this without uh, having to redo the artwork. So let's go back a step. Release the selection. Notice that, now let's get off of uh, warp here. Notice that that's a, a whole layer by itself, right? 
So if I move this too much, you're going to see artifacts to this top edge. So one of the tricks there is to take a soft brush and erase this back. And you got to be strategic about it, but what happens is with that having a softer edge, the likelihood of it blending into the artwork uh, stands a better chance. Now, if you're working off a line edge, you're going to go off that line edge because you can manipulate the line edge with comic art. So you have to really, you know, pick and choose your battles there. But keep in mind, that's one of the techniques that digital painters use. And again, I find that I can usually make it work in my comic art. So again, you can go to warp and or even distort. So distort is going to give you the perspective distort. That was already kind of in there anyways. But uh, warp uh, will allow you to grab just components of it and move it around based on that specific area. So kind of like liquefy and like I said or I think I've mentioned I like liquefy for pretty much for all of this but warp is nice as well and you do have advanced mesh which gives you better control uh, of the control points and a bezier handle kind of way which is actually kind of unique I don't think I've seen this particular uh, method inside of Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint I could be wrong but this seems pretty advanced um, Regardless, it's pretty advanced for this all being inside of an app. You know, it's it's kind of mind-blowing for me that they were able to do this. Um, you know, you still got things like flip, horizontal, rotate, all that. But basically, warp is, is this uh, effect with the advanced mesh. That's the main uh, portion that's going to give you great control for modifying your artwork like that on the go. So, again, keep in mind, it, you're going to see a better uh, representation of this if it's not merged together. Uh, with the background because then you're really going to be able to move this over and then once you move that over you're just going to repaint and fix the artwork there so hopefully this gets you rolling on you know being aware of the liquify and warp commands inside of this app fantastic way to modify your work keep in mind too that this doesn't make you any less of an artist whenever you tend to use tools like this it helps you spot more and more flaws by correcting your work so over time with each new piece that you create you're just going to correct them before you get to needing the tool, eventually not needing the tool at all. So take every option you can to improve your work. Don't worry about, you know, naysayers think, thinking it's something like cheating or whatever. I, I can't stand when I see those types of comments because uh, what you're ultimately doing is training your eye to get better and better over time. Uh, so with that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. Keep in mind that I'll be adding a new section on my Procreate course on Udemy where I teach how to create digital art. It obviously won't be characters like Spider-Gwen. Uh, I'll have to use my own characters, but I'm going to make sure to add a section in that where I teach the penciling, inking, and coloring all in uh, this particular type of style uh, so that people can be... Uh, you know, versed in that as well. And obviously I'll be sharing more free YouTube videos so you can uh, pick up lessons on here as well. Uh, if you want to see the finished artwork, because I'm not quite done with this one, I'll make sure there's links in the description box below for my Facebook and my DeviantArt uh, where I post the finished artwork when I'm done. So this brings this one to a close. I really appreciate you tuning and watching. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.